Hello, and welcome to Reside by Sotheby's International Realty. I'm Eric Weinbrecht, your host and guide as we dive into the pages of Reside magazine to discover more about the incredible people, places, and brands featured within. Please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to at Sotheby's Realty on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube to experience incredible homes and stories from around the world. Without further delay, let's get started. Nashville is one of America's vibrant landmarks, and one with a heart fueled by a historic musical heritage. Featured in the latest edition of the magazine, I have the pleasure of being joined by Jessica Averbush, CEO of Zeitlin Sotheby's International Realty. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Eric. How are you? I am well. How about you? I'm doing great. We're having a beautiful sunny day in Nashville, so all is good. Perfect. Perfect. How is the market performing there? Are you, are you seeing any kind of trends? Absolutely. I mean, Nashville uh, has been named, as I'm sure you're aware, as one of the it cities. Um, it is exploding in growth. Um, and another thing we're really known for, which I think is very important, is we're named as one of the most friendly cities. Um in the United States. And so it's a very special time here from a growth perspective. In terms of our market, we're growing. Nashville really is middle Tennessee. Um, and um, we are growing in every direction in this region. Um, but we're also experiencing tremendous uh, growth and revitalization of our urban core. Um, and so a major trend in Nashville right now is if you go downtown, um, you will see cranes absolutely everywhere. And it's everything from large hotels um, to um, huge mixed-use office types of developments um, and then amazing um, residential properties and high-rises that we just truly didn't have in the past. And, and now we've got many of them coming out of the ground. So it's a very exciting time in our real estate market. So it's really momentum is is the word that I would use to describe our market and kind of the trends that you see throughout. And I knew in the back of my head, I, I had a feeling you were going to mention those cranes. Every, every time I talk to somebody from, uh, from Nashville, especially from, uh, from Zeitlin, Sotheby's International Realty, they, they always mention the cranes. <laughs> yes, there, there is growth everywhere. And we had a lot of room to grow. Um, and so now you're just truly seeing all the different aspects of our city, um, whether it's the arts, or um, business, or healthcare, education, everybody is, is kind of partaking in that growth. And so it's not just one niche of, of our city that's um, experiencing that momentum. That's great. And, and, and speaking of that growth, uh, Zeitlin Sotheby's International Realty uh, joined the, the brand uh, in April uh, of this yes, year. Yes, yes. It was incredibly exciting to have this opportunity to be affiliated with truly uh, the best of the best in terms of world-class service. Um, and it's really exciting to be in a city like Nashville because people want to come to Nashville um, from all over the world. In fact, I'll tell a cute story. I met a an owner of a Sotheby's in a French Polynesian Island um, just two weeks ago at a conference. And as you can imagine, I was pretty fascinated by the idea of living in French Polynesia and that island culture. And when I told him where I was from, I told him Nashville, Tennessee, his eyes got so round. He got so excited. He said, oh, Nashville, ooh, I want to visit there. <laughs> and so we have that kind of uh, allure and appeal. And it's exciting because when you're a part of um, you know, an incredible network of real estate you know, brokerages around the world. What we've found since we joined in April is they're all coming to town. They're all coming to see us. They want to have fun. They want to experience it. Um, and they know people that are moving here. So they want to, they want to make that connection. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think in the, the article, uh, you mentioned, uh, birthdays and, and bachelorette parties and bachelor parties. I, I believe Nashville has a nickname. Um, <laughs> we do. <laughs> We are we are the number one. We're the capital um, for uh, bachelorette parties, um, and you can see and feel that the minute that you you get here, if you fly um, when you walk through our airport. Um, so our airport used to be, you know, a pretty typical airport. Now 
Um, you know, number one, the sound of live music as it should be is what greets you when you get off the plane. And then whether you want to go to a wine bar or get a manicure, um, you know, it's, it's, it's well suited for people who are coming in to have a fun celebratory weekend. And there's lots of bachelorette parties. Yeah, I guess that would that would also uh, explain the the Nash Vegas, right? The- <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, people come here to have a really good time, and we show that to them. So, so other than the nightlife and and um and the parties that are that are bringing people to Nashville, what what else is really driving the the culture there? Well, you know, culture wise, um, obviously we've always been known as Music City. Um, But what I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, number one, it's not just country music. Um, So there is so much industry with all the record labels that are here um, and so much draw to the lifestyle of Nashville um, that you see musicians from Justin Timberlake um, to, I mean, just a wide, wide range um, of pop or other genres of music. in people in entertainment who come here. Um, but the other piece that I think people maybe don't realize is just the, the, the rich cultural scene. Um, so we have an unbelievable amount of, um, ways for people to really have an amazing cultural experience here. And they range from range from very traditional, um, the Tennessee performing arts center where you can go see, um, you know, all of the bra- off Broadway, you know, shows that, um, everybody enjoys, Um, And then we have really innovative um, opportunities. We have a wonderful place called Oz, and it is a destination for innovative contemporary art experiences, um, both interactive, all all mediums. Um, Our Skirmerhorn Symphony is the building is is known as one of the best acoustically in the world, and that draws again not just classical music but all genres of music. Um, which is really incredible. We have art crawls once a month happening all over town in different neighborhoods. Um, so it's just a very rich, vibrant art scene. In fact, just a couple years ago, we um, had a hotel opened up called the 21C Art Museum Hotel. And it is an incredible experience. If you're an art lover, that's definitely where you want to stay when you come to Nashville. Like we mentioned a few times so far, uh, you know, the nightlife is the big scene, and that is the uh, the central point of the piece in the latest version of Reside. And a, a few uh, locations, hotspots are highlighted. Um, you know, let, let let let's talk about one or two of them. What's uh what's one on that list that really jumps out at you? One is Patterson House. Patterson House is a wonderful place to either start or end your evening. Um, It's a traditional speakeasy. It's very cool. Um, It has a very exclusive feel, although they don't take reservations. Um, So it's accessible to everyone, and it's a very intimate experience. Um, And you're not just there to drink. You're there to really have an experience and taste these incredible craft cocktails with made from ingredients like you've never experienced. I think everybody uh, has a, has quite a packed trip ahead of them uh, next time they head to Nashville. So thank you very much for joining us today and, uh, and giving us a tour of, of your incredible city. Oh, well, it has been my absolute pleasure. I hope everyone will come and visit us. They're really, there's something for everyone. And, um, and it's the most friendly city. So people really, they welcome you with open arms. Thanks again to Jessica and Zeitlin Sotheby's International Realty for joining us today. From the music halls and nightlife of Nashville, let's take a trip to New York City to see how one of the world's most renowned retailers is changing the landscape of home decor. The Barney's New York brand and their flagship store on Madison Avenue represent not only a pivotal piece of Manhattan's history, but also a cornerstone of the greater luxury world. Today, that world is expanding. Joining me is Tom Calendarian, Executive Vice President and General Merchandise Manager for Men's, Children's, and Home at Barney's New York to tell us more about the brand's latest foray into home goods. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm great, Eric. How are you? I'm well. So so tell me about a, a little bit about what's going on there at Barney's. Well, we're really excited that we have this opportunity to create a new experience and an elevated experience for our our home client, both the client who is the end user as well as the decorators, designers, and architects that come to the store looking for incredible gifts and 
beautiful home decor products. Now, is is this something that's that's considered familiar territory for you guys there, or, or is this a really a, a kind of a brand new offering? Well, the the product dates back into the late seventies when the owner's wife, Phyllis Pressman, decided to create an emporium for fantastic gifts. And the original iteration of the business, she primarily focused on antiques. So we had beautiful Lalique and Baccarat and Majolica. And in addition to that, it expanded and expanded with needing new and more product. So the obvious, the obvious result was they developed a gift shop that was like no other. And as many people know, the Barney's Cachet, it's an eclectic and very interesting concept of finding rare and exclusive products. So Mrs. Pressman built the, the, the basis of the business on trying to find extremely exclusive special products that would be at the level of our client and would, would pique their interest. So as this business evolved, by the time into the 80s, by 1986, when the, the women's store opened, it was a full-blown gift shop with children's gifts and an infant department and a tabletop department. And it really became a mecca and an emporium for these kinds of special decor and high-taste products. Has this experience always been in this special part of the building? In the, in the piece in, in Reside Magazine, there's a lot of talk about the Chelsea Passage, and it, it just seems like a very uh, storied and a very historic space to kind of house this experience. True. The brand name, the Chelsea Passage, was something that grew out of actually finding a space at the original store location at 7th Avenue and 17th Street, there were many buildings that comprised the total men's store at the time. And between two buildings, there was this great alley that they were able to open up and cover with a beautiful glass roof that created a skylight effect. And it literally was a passage between two buildings. So the name, the Chelsea Passage, stuck, and it became the brand identifier for this collection of products. How did you guys go about choosing the the artists and the you know the talent to um, to pair with in in this new venture? Not unlike our clients, we're always looking for something unexpected, and that is really the DNA of the brand. You probably know that about Barney's when you think about the fashion we carry. Why would it be any different when it comes to the interiors that we think about? So in that sense, it is part of our our. DNA. It's, it's part of the way we think. It's our thought process in terms of how to cultivate the assortments and how to create a mix that's compelling that will excite the customer. So it's very important for us to always come up with something surprising and new and to keep moving. And one of the things that we're always thinking about is how to animate that in the stores. And we've designated a space in the store. We call it our pop-up space. And it will consistently change throughout the year every two to three months and we'll have a different installation, which allows us to experiment, to test something and hopefully find the next new great thing that becomes another core part of our business. Where do you see this going in the future? You know, what, what, what would you like to see uh, accomplished in, in, this, in this venture? I do think that Barney's New York home is a great opportunity mainly for our clients. And as we've evolved, the client is now sometimes the designer and the architect. And in many ways, the fact that they're using Barney's as a resource is very exciting. Thank you very much for your time today, Tom. You could read more about Barney's New York home um, and the location in the latest edition of Reside and on uh, our website. And uh, of, of course, if you're in the area, definitely uh, stop by and see it with your own eyes. Thanks again, Tom. Thank you, Eric. And don't forget to look at us on Barneys.com. Tom and his team at Barneys New York are continuing a long tradition of reinvention, one infused with art, culture, and a grand sense of creation. Speaking of art, last week brought Art Basel, one of the world's most talked about art events, to Miami. I had the opportunity to check in with Mai De La Vega at One Sotheby's International Realty shortly before the event made its return. 
It's that time of year again. Art Basel is around the corner and ready to capture the city of Miami. With me is Mai De La Vega, founder and CEO of One Sotheby's International Realty, to give us the ins and outs of Art Basel in Miami. Hi, Mai. How's it going? Hi, how are you? I am well. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. So can you just tell me a little bit about the impact that Art Basel has when it comes to town? It just creates a super exciting time. There's all kinds of parties everywhere. Everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon and be a part of Art Basel, which is so exciting for our city because the restaurants are busy and it just, you see the best of South Florida during that time. You really do get great people from all over the world, all different cultures. And it's so exciting to see that, you know, and to see the growth actually of how the city has is enamored really with Art Basel. Are there any exhibits or artists you're particularly excited about? I'm always excited to see Tomas Saraceno's work. Saraceno is a wonderful Argentinian contemporary artist. He does large scale interactive installations, kind of like floating sculptures. It's always fascinating to see the galleries, you know, the actual exhibition at the center and also the growth of the fairs that are not as that have very important artists, but somehow don't make it to the main convention center. All of the off fairs that they have are really quite interesting from Pinta, which basically uh, showcases a lot of the Latin American artists, um, as well as, you know, Nada and on and on. They just have multiple off fairs that are just really interesting. Red Dot, just tons of them that are great to, to visit. Finding the hidden gems. Finding the little hidden gems, yes. You can find like this great Japanese artist that does um, small glass work. Um, and, you know, price is also that I think there's you've got the really serious collectors and then you've got maybe some millennials and younger folks that are starting to starting a collection and are doing their research and are looking for these hidden gems. So you find a lot of that in these uh, small art fairs throughout the city. It seems like it's catering to not just the, you know, the, the seasoned collector, but like you said, also, you know, the, maybe the burgeoning one, the, the people that are looking to get into the, into the art form of collecting. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's also some of the purpose of some of the talks that take place during this time, um, really encouraging everyone to participate and see art as uh, something important in everyone's lives. And you can collect art at, you know, you can, they've got all kinds of price points. So it's really wonderful to see the community engaged in such great enthusiasm during this time period. You know, you mentioned again in the piece, just kind of how, how important this, this event really is to the city of Miami. And I don't want to give away all of the, the great uh, tips and tidbits that, uh, that you included in Reside Magazine. But if I had to distill you down to one thing that you have to do while you're in Miami during Art Basel, um, what would that one thing be? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really tough question because I just basically stop working for those three or four days and just kind of really try to schedule myself to be able to go to as much as possible from, cause it, it's really, I mean, it, it starts, you know, early in the morning and it goes through by the time you're done with events and parties and, you know, exhibits. I love Nilo's on South beach. I, I love going there and it's a great vibe. It's beautiful people. Um, I also love going to Casa Tua. Um, there's a lot of, uh, energy there. It's a beautiful, small little boutique place. They have a private club upstairs, so I like I like going to those two. And you always meet people, and and but you never you really never know where you're going to end because it's just so busy that some days you just don't eat or end up anywhere except home. <laughs> well, that's the that's the beauty of an event like this, and especially when it's in a place like Miami, such a, a global city with so many options. Um, thank you so much for, for spending the time with me to talk about Art Basel. And um, for everyone listening, if you need any more information about the event or any more ideas, if you're visiting, be sure to check out uh, Mai's piece in Reside Magazine. Well, thank you so much. And I hope to see everyone here. 
Thank you again to Jessica, Tom, and Mai for joining me today and being a part of podcast number one. Thanks also to Stephen Connolly, our editor behind the board, and all of you for listening. If you're craving more of Reside, visit sotheby'srealty.com slash reside for more from this and past issues. Until next time.